Hello and welcome to Andy's Cornish Creations. My name is Andy Paramore and in this video we'll be turning a little man with uh, a helmet on uh, that I'm going to call Helmet. And uh, we're starting off with a piece of sapili. It's about six inches long and I'm just going to turn it to round using my um, roughing gouge. It's an inch and a quarter roughing gouge. Just turn it around. I'm putting a tenon on the bottom so that I can fix it into my uh, chuck and uh, that will allow me to uh, turn the piece of wood without tail stock, tail stock support if necessary. Just putting a, a dovetail on the uh, tenon there. Here I'm just marking where the that's the uh, where the helmet stops, and there's the uh, the body, and the rest of the uh, piece of timber is uh, going to be spare. I'll probably make another one with that. So I'm going in with a narrow parting tool to define the uh, the helmet and the body. This is an old. Um, Mortis chisel that, uh, that I use as a as a scraper. Yeah, with my three eighths inch um, spindle gouge, just to get the general shape. And, uh, and here's the skew chisel, a one inch skew chisel. Take out any uh, any sort of peaks and troughs on the piece, and smooth it out, get a nice curve to it. And I'm giving a bit of shape to the body. It's a very simple design. And that's basically it for the, uh, for the helmet and the body. Again just using the skew chisel just to just to smooth out that curve. Little bit of sanding from 120 to 400. A half inch skew chisel just to finish the top off. The skew chisel leaves less marks, or fewer marks than the, uh, any other chisel. That kind of uh, application. Just sanding off the top where I couldn't get to before. And now I'm applying some um, abrasive paste. And remove any excess after the paste's done its job and then I've got a bit of French polish which I quite like to use on these smaller pieces it does give a nice shine Parting off the uh, helmet, 
just a piece of wood so long there, uh, I didn't want to be pressing on too much. So I went to the uh, to the fine um, parting tool so that it would be putting less sideways pressure on the piece. Part off the helmet. Brought up the tailstock support just so that I could uh, put a bit more pressure on and also uh, part of the, uh, the bottom of the uh, body right down so there's little to do at the end. And now parting the bottom off. And that's the helmet and the body finished. Now I've mounted up a piece of oak onto the, uh, onto the chuck. And I'm using my 3 8 spindle gouge again to, uh, to round it to uh, the, the diameter that I've worked out. It's just a little bit smaller than the helmet and the, uh, and the body. And to get it round, if, uh, if I use the calipers, I use calipers to get the, uh, the diameter, I can use the same calipers and, and mark it on the side. And I know that uh, if I get the same width as the diameter on the side, then it's going to be a, a, a perfect circle. Here I'm using another 3 8 spindle gun. I should put on this one. I've I've uh, sh sharpened it so that there's more of a point to it, so I can get it into, into the uh, less uh, accessible areas, a bit of a sort of a detailed one for finer work. Now I'm sanding it again. It'll be sanded from 120 to 400. Again, abrasive paste. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up. Give it a buff up. It's got a nice shine on it. And again, the parting tool. So there's as little finishing off to do as possible. Right, now over to a, a belt sander because the shape I need on this is a, basically it's like a, a wedge um, so that uh, so that when it, when I put it between the body and the hat it uh, sort of sits sits down and the hat is at an angle sort of tipping backwards so I'm creating a bit of a wedge shape. Fast forward a little bit here because uh, uh, it did take quite a lot of sanding down. With hindsight, I could have uh, I could have made the same shape with a with a uh, piece of 20 mil or half inch uh, timber and done that round. But it all worked out okay in the end. Got a bit of super glue, CA glue, some activator, and just position the head in the middle of the body there and then same again CA and, uh, and then pop the helmet on so 
that's it, nearly finished. But stick around to the very end because there's, uh, I had a little bit of an embellishment on it, uh, which you don't see here. But uh, if you stick around, you'll be able to see it at the end of the video. And that's the hat on, it's just sloping backwards. And it's a really simple little turn. It's quite good fun. Right, I'll, uh, I'll pass you over to me. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, really simple little project this one. And I've kept everything as, uh, as simple and easy as possible. The two shapes of the, um, I think it's Iroko that I used here are, are really easy to do. And uh, likewise that, uh, that little piece in the middle is uh, very straightforward. The nose and the head is all in one. Uh, you can do a little pointy nose, whatever you like. With hindsight, I, would, I could have made that middle section out of uh, just a piece of 10mm timber and just uh, just turn that shape without having to do all that grinding uh, to get the thickness down and in actual fact I think it would look better if it was even thinner so that the uh, hat and the um, and the body were uh, were really close and with just the head poking out but, um, but anyway and uh, yeah and perhaps a bit more contrast between the head and the top and bottom but, uh, but anyway, you get the idea. As I say, it's a really simple, it's a good starter project for anybody just wanting to have a little play. Um, you know, do it in three different segments, uh, take your time with it, and you, you can hardly go wrong, really. You do need a, a few tools, but, um, but uh, like the head, you could have sawn those off and put them between. Um, didn't need to be on a uh, on a sander, but uh, if you've got one, you know you're going to make use of it. <laughs> um, anyway, hope you liked it. He's a good little fun guy. Uh, a bit different. Anyway, if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, then please do so, uh, uh, and uh, like and share. Um, and all those good things and, um, and please leave a comment uh, I do enjoy those so uh, that'd be great my name is Andy Paramore this is Andy's Cornish Creations from a, a very wet Cornwall again <laughs> it's going to be dark outside now it's going to be late but um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one thank you bye bye Okay, so this is the extra little bit, and um, I've got a piece of ash dowel, about uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, mounted in a chuck. I'm using my 3 8 spindle gouge that has been, uh, it's got a sharper grind on it to, uh, to give it a finer point to do more detail work. And here I'm just going in with the, uh, with the gouge and creating a bit of depth for the petals and this is the uh, little button on the um, what's going to be a little uh, sort of daisy style flower so uh, I'm just creating a bit of depth here where the petals are going to go nice light fine cuts Move the tool rest around the side. And I'm going to go around the back now to uh, make the form the petals, and it'll be going down to the stem of the flower, which is uh, which is going to be a which is going to finish up as a six millimeter dowel that will uh, fit into a six millimeter hole, which will be drilled into the body. Of the, uh, quarter inch um, 
mortise chisel, which I use as a parting tool or a scraper or whatever I need. And I'm just going, I've just gone a little bit bigger than six millimeters there. And then I'm using a six millimeter spanner that's had one edge sharpened. And uh, then I push that in and it will give me a, uh, give me a six millimeter dowel. background. She's seen somebody at the bottom of the drive probably. Right, I'm uh, marking out where the petals are going. There's going to be five petals, so I've just roughly split it up into five. It doesn't have to be too accurate. And now I've got a, uh, a rotary tool with a, uh, it's got a metal blade on, fine metal blade, uh, but it'll work okay on the wood, it's only a little bit of grinding away. I'm resting it on the tool rest just to give it a bit of support, so I'm, I'm cutting in and then just rounding off the, uh, to form the petals. Not being too fussy at all, just the general shape, just give an impression of a, a little flower. Keeping everything nice and simple. And that's the last one done. And that's the little flower made. I'm just going to add a bit of colour now. So I'm getting some, um, a couple of uh, marker pens. Yellow one for the center. And a sort of blue green for the petals. And I'll do the round the back of them as well. And all that's left is use a half inch skew chisel, put a little chamfer on the, on the end of the dowel, and then I'll get my hand round the back of the chuck, making sure that my sleeve isn't anywhere near, and part it off, catch it. And there we have it. A really simple little flower, great fun to make. Yeah, I just punched a little mark into the body just to give my drill something to start off in. And this is a six millimeter drill. For the, uh, for the dowel to fit into. There we go, nice tight fit. Just pops in there and that's it, completed. Just adds a little something I think. If you if you really did watch it to to the very end of the video, you'll have um, you'll have noticed that uh, I hadn't got a little flower on it. Uh, so uh, well done if you really did make it to the end, and you get to see the little guy with the uh, with the flower on, just to embellish it a little bit. But yeah, good fun making those, and uh, really simple but quite effective. Thanks for sticking with me.